Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here at Yashari Ministries with Casa de Israel. Thank you for being there. Thank you for your support. If you like the content, like I always say, like, subscribe, share. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. With that being said, let's do a Torah blessing. Bless Adonai who is blessed. Bless Adonai who is blessed now and forever. Blessed are you, Adonai. Our God, sovereign of the universe, who has chosen us from among the nations and has given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives the Torah. Amen. So, this week's Torah portion is Pinchas. Let's get started. Before we get to Pinchas, we will have to review what happened last week. Last week, Balak, after Israel defeated Sihon and Og, kingdoms are powerful. Before they got to Balak and the plains of Moab, Balak saw this coming and he was scared. So he decided to call Balaam, the great sorcerer, and he was called to curse the people of Israel. Balaam said he could not say or do anything against the word of his God, Elohim, yod heh vav -Hey. And effectively, even though Balaam went on his way, God confronted him. And eventually, in the attempt of cursing the people of Israel four times, he blesses them. And not only that, but he gives a prophetic message to Balaak and what the people of Israel will do to him because of his attempt to destroy the people. The people of Israel have been doing good. They've been obeying this new generation that has been growing in the desert, has seen the testimony of their fathers, has been given the opportunity to enter the land it's been 40 years and now they are it's close to get into the land but something happens in chapter 25 and so we will focus on that because Pinchas or Phineas is given a blessing and he's given an honor on behalf of God and we have to understand why and it's very simple this video today will be very simple and very short to the point okay let's get started in numbers 25 verse 10 to numbers 30 verse 1 okay and so it says here, it says verse 10, Voy a deber Adonai el Moshe Amor Phineas ben el Asar ben Acharon Hakohen Eshib et Hamamati al bene Israel be Haneot et Hinea be Toham Palo Hili et bene Israel be and in English, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Pinchas, or Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned away my wrath from the sons of Israel, and that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not destroy the sons of Israel in my jealousy. But context of this story starts in the beginning of this and it says here, so Israel remained in Shittim. It says, the people began to play the harlot with the daughters of Moab, for they invited the people to the sacrifice of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel joined themselves to Baal Peor, and the Lord was angry against Israel. The Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of the people and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the fear and anger of the Lord may turn from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, each of you slay his men who have joined themselves to Baal Peor. Then behold, one of the sons of Israel came and brought to his relatives a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses, in the sight of all the congregation of it, the sons of Israel, while they were weeping at the doorway of the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he arose from the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand, and he went after the men of Israel into the tent and pierced both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through the body. So the plague of the sons of Israel was checked. Those who died by the plague were 24,000. So we see that there was a plague because the people of Israel, after they were blessed by Balaam, after they were protected by Elohim because of their obedience, they stumble. They worship Baal Peor. Now, worshiping Baal Peor is very, very, very bad. Why? Baal Peor is one of the most prominent gods in the Hittite, Canaanite, and Mesopotamian area. It wasn't so popular in Mesopotamia, but in the Canaanite region, Baal Peor was a god of fertility. He was related to or connected to Moloch, the worship of Moloch, which 
basically you will give birth to a baby and basically sacrifice it to Moloch and burn it or to Asherah which was a fertility god and so they were connected in the way that Baal will reign and he will fertilize the ground which was uh, Astarte and from there the fruit came and the produce came now I don't think I have to describe what I mean by that okay they were worshiping this and so the act of worship to Baal Peor was a sexual worship and so that encounter is understood that the son of israel with the moabite going in front of the tent of meeting was a worship to wild peor and it was going to cause a dishonor to elohim and so remember elohim's honor is not only in the tabernacle around the tabernacle but is in the camp as well the people are the honor of elohim and so phineas in his jealousy while moses and the other people were weeping phineas saw the moment in where he connected with elohim's jealousy and understood that the camp, God's order, God's presence, God's kingdom is over anything or any perspective that the world can bring. In that moment, the Moabites and the leader of Israel is honor Elohim. Phineas throwing the spear and killing them and ending the plague, which stopped it at 24,000. It could have been more. But remember, the only reason why there was death in the camp was because of the disobedience of Israel. It wasn't because Elohim wanted it that way or because it was planned that way. Remember, there's a choice here, okay? You have to understand that there is consequences for your actions. That is the message that Elohim is trying to give Israel. Israel was doing good. They worship an idol in Baal Peor in the worst way possible. And then this leader comes in front of the tent of meeting and tries to dishonor Elohim. Okay, so let's keep reading. Therefore, say, behold, I give him my covenant of peace and it shall be for him and his descendants after him a covenant of perpetual priesthood because he was jealous for his God and he made atonement for the sons of Israel. Now the name of the slain man is of Israel who was slain with the Midianite woman was Simri son of Salu, a leader of the father's household among the Simonites. The name of the Midianite woman who was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zur, who was head of the people of the father of the household of Midian. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, be hostile to the Midianites and strike them. For they have been hostile to you with their tricks with which they have deceived you in the affair of Peor and the affair of Cosby, the daughter of the leader of Midian, their sister who was slain on the day of the plague because of Peor. Now, Pinchas did something very simple. Pinchas saw in a moment where the people of Israel were going astray. They were worshiping by Peor. And so remember, it's understood that the Midianites lured them to a tent. There is believed that uh, in extra biblical books, it explains that there was a business transaction that was going on in where they were making business. They were let into a tent into where the business turned into something more private and then it became something of a worship to their gods. They had a covenantal meal and then there was a sexual act and worship. These people led the people of Israel astray because they lost their focus. It could have been greed. It could have been uh, the desire to do more, to get more. At the end of the day, whatever led the people of Israel to go astray in this moment, the consequences was that 24,000 people died because of their disobedience. This poor portion, or at least for this video, this week's video, is very simple, very direct to the point. And I think Phineas and Pinchas teaches this very well, it's very quick to the point. Phineas saw that there was something wrong in the camp. Now, Phineas didn't act out of character. Phineas was a priest or he was a guard to the tabernacle because he was one of the sons of Aaron's right son of Eleazar and so he was a descendancy of the Levitical priesthood so he had a right to defend the tabernacle he fulfilled his role that's what is most beautiful about this uh, Torah portion. Phineas teaches us that we have to stand for God and that's one of my favorite messages because the world needs us to stand for him God needs us to stand for him in the world and I don't mean that as a human, you can do something to defend God. But I mean, your actions speak louder than words. And when you say, I believe in the God of Israel, and you stand for it, it makes a change. I really do believe that. Phineas did that on this Torah portion. And I think it's very simple, at least for chapter 25. Obviously, there's a census. They're counted again, and they're elevated again. And so these there's a census. This explains uh, Selofehad's dispute of ownership, land, and, and inheritance. It all talks about the offerings of the, of the feast. But before you get to all of that, you have to understand that before you get to be elevated and counted into the kingdom, before you're able to go ahead and inheritance of any sort, and be, before you're able to bring offerings and approach Elohim, you have to understand that you have to be zealous for Elohim. 
You have to be zealous for his word. And what I mean zealous, it means you have to be jealous to honor God. And it's going to be weird. Matias, or sorry, Nubert, Elias, Doria, Ariana, Alejandro, Kaylin, Alex, Melvin, all of you. And if I'm naming a bunch of names, they're my youth. For anybody, understand that God wants you to be jealous for his word. And he wants you to honor it. King has teaches us in chapter 25 that when the people were doing their thing in the world, he stood up and delivered God's will. Now, I'm not saying go out and start spearing everybody. And I'm not saying that, I'm not promoting that, but I'm saying that if you represent God's word, you're obedient, Shabbat, tras Shabbat. I just said that in Spanish. Shabbat from Shabbat, feast from feast, year to year. As the world keeps on going, every Saturday, people are gonna say, wow, there's a remnant of people that are honoring the king who reigns, the creator of everything. That's what Ping has taught us here, that there is a true king. And even though that he's merciful, He's gracious. He is zealous for his honor and his will. So, that being said, be like Pinkhas in the zealousy, not in the. Don't, don't spear nobody, please. I am not. I am not promoting any violence. I know Alejandro is going to try to say that. I'm just saying, honor God, obey him, and represent him in everything you do. And the world will see the true king. That's all I got. I, f I didn't have time to make a PowerPoint. Sorry. Have a great week. Shabbat and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Also, you can follow uh, Casa Israel Yara or Israel Yara at israelyara.org. You can go to Wisdom and Torah Ministries. You can go to Treasure of the Temple or Tesoro del Templo. Um, you can go to Yeshav on YouTube, Yeshav CIY. You can go to, oh, somebody else that I can present to you is Walter Agosto. You can go to walteragosto.org. He's in Spanish, but hey, great information. And yeah. Just a lot of resources, guys. There's no excuse.